For so much of Matthew Perry's life, going back to childhood, making people laugh was what mattered, and he was very good at doing just that. All right, when was 1990? <laughs> okay, you have to stop the Q-tip when there's resistance. As the beloved Chandler Bing on the hit NBC show, Friends. I went to that tanning place your wife suggested. Was that place? The Sun? <laughs> but it was Perry's vicious battle with alcohol and drug addiction that would define him and inspire him to help others. Perry opened up about his struggles back in 2003, his friends' co-stars surrounding him on Oprah as he spoke about the moment he sought help. The studio audience moved by his admission. Uh, you. you know, it, 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 it actually has very little to do with courage at, at first. It's really a, it's, it's kind of a life or death kind of situation. You ultimately kind of, I guess the key word is surrender, and you, and you realize that you need help, so you finally ask for it, and you realize the Matthew Perry plan sucks. <laughs> <laughs> the following year, an emotional Jennifer Aniston later talked about her concern for Perry. We weren't equipped, we weren't... <laughs> To, to deal with it, you know, nobody had ever dealt with with that, and you know, the idea of even losing him or you have to put him together but yourself. He's all right. Years later, Perry would become an outspoken champion for people struggling with addiction. In 2013, he appeared on the BBC's Newsnight, where he spoke courageously about the disease. Well, that, that, I'm a drug addict. I'm a person that if I have a drink, I can't stop. But it was almost exactly a year ago, in 2022, Perry bared it all, opening up about the horror lurking behind that famous smile, announcing what would become his best-selling memoir. Hi, everyone. Today is the day my memoir, Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing, is finally out in the world. Speaking about the ravages of the addictions he suffered at the height of his fame to Diane Sawyer. For some reason, it's obviously because I was on Friends, more people will listen to me. So I've got to take advantage of that. I've got to help as many people as I can. You start with a thunderclap, first page. Hi, my name is Matthew, although you may know me by another name. My friends call me Maddie, and I should be dead. Yeah. That's definitely true. He traced the origins of his alcohol addiction to his teen years in Canada. I had never drank before, and I just sort of drank this entire bottle of what was called Anwar's Baby Duck. That was the name of the wine. And I lay in the grass and just was in, was in heaven. And I thought that at 14. And I was doing fine this afternoon. Then in 1997, a jet ski accident while filming the movie Fools Rush In led a doctor to prescribe him the painkiller Vicodin. It would be the beginning of a downward spiral, taking more and more pills to stave off withdrawal. 55 Vicodin a day, which is where I was. 55? Yeah. How did you get 55 a day? Well, I had to wake up and realize that I needed to get 55 of them or I was going to be really sick. So I did all sorts of things. I had a bunch of doctors, fake migraines and all that stuff. And I guess the weirdest thing I did was on Sundays, I would go to open houses and go to the bathrooms in the, so in the open house and see what pills they had in there and steal them. And I think they thought, well, there's no way that Chandler came in and stole from us. More than two decades, countless months in rehab, days and nights clinging to life in the hospital, multiple surgeries due to a burst colon brought on by his opioid addiction. They ran me into um, the emergency trauma room. Well, I was put on an ECMO machine. And an ECMO machine, when you talk to any doctor, is a Hail Mary is the last thing that you do before people die. And there were five people that night that were put on ECMO machine, and I was the only one who survived. You say, addiction, the big terrible thing, is far too powerful for anyone to defeat alone. But together, one day at a time, 
we can beat it down. Yeah. Your disease is just outside, just doing one arm push-ups, just waiting, just waiting for you, waiting to get you alone. Because alone, you lose to the disease. And now I finally feel okay and feel like I've got some strength. I think people who have a loud uh, soapbox, megaphone, that they have an opportunity to speak honestly about their problem. Perry made sure that others wouldn't have to go through it alone either. He established a sober house, the Perry House, one of his former residences. Longtime friend Hank Azaria mourned Perry and thanked him for his friendship on Instagram. The night I went into AA, Matthew brought me in. Um, the whole first year I was sober, we went to meetings together. As a sober person, um, he was so caring and giving and wise, and he totally helped me um, get sober. None of us are perfect people. He certainly was not a perfect person. He certainly was not a perfect recoverer, but I admire the, cur the courage to put himself out there in that way, because I do think that ultimately that helps people. While millions around the world will remember him as the quick-witted Chandler Bing, as he told the CBC's Tom Power, Perry ultimately hoped to leave behind a different legacy. The best thing about me, bar none, is if somebody comes up to me and says, I can't stop drinking, can you help me? I can say yes and follow up and do it. That's the best thing. And I've said this for a long time, when I die, I don't want friends to be the first thing that's mentioned. I want that to be the first thing that's mentioned. And I'm gonna live the rest of my life proving that. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.